Psalms 119 verses 81 to 88. Cough. Affliction and the word. From Genesis 3 until eternity. Well, I should take that back. And from Genesis chapter 3 to death or the rapture, there's going to be affliction. There's going to be pain and sorrow. And the Bible talks about it, and the Bible mentions it. How many people have been recorded to die in the Bible, either a name or just a number? My soul fainteth for thy salvation. It wants the salvation. It, it's, it faints. It's weakened. It desires, but I hope in thy word. The word is where we get the salvation and what God has given us. The way that God will do for man according to the dispensation. Hope in the word is salvation. If you despise or reject the word, then you don't have salvation. Anybody who does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today has no hope in the word because that's what the word is. The word is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There are some people that have hope in the word on something that is hanging on a wall. Or it's you, you, you open it up and you read uh, 1, 5, 10, 20, 50. And that's not the word. Your foundation and assurance is in what God has said. And that word, according to John 1.1, 1, 1, the hope thereof, of Titus 2.13, is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we saw that in verse 74. You are to want what the Word says. Paul says one thing, you are to pray for the peace in Jerusalem. You are to want that. Because the only way you're going to get peace in Jerusalem is with the Lord Jesus Christ sitting on David's throne in Jerusalem. And the Word says that is so. The hope in, in the Word that God says, I am building you a mansion. Now, it's too bad some people have a word that says a house or whatever other kind of low form that they have. God has promised you things, and one of the things you need to do is rightly divide by studying to find out what promises belong to you. That's hope. The word says that one day God is going to call us all up. Dead or alive. That's hope in the word. And check out Hebrews 11. One sometime. Check out Hebrews 11. How many people hope in the word of God. And some it even records. Hasn't even got that hope yet. Like Abraham in the land. My eyes fail for thy word. Saying, when wilt thou comfort me? We have today written in the word as a born again Christian since we're in a church age period. I will never leave thee or forsake thee. We need to realize that in life there will be uncomfort. There will be troubles and trials and tribulations. And what does the word say about that? Do you know where the places are to go for comfort? My eyes have failed for thy word, saying, when will thou comfort me? He does not run to drugs. He does not run to man. He doesn't run to alcohol. He runs to 
the word. He seeks God by the word. You know what Peter says? That this book you have in front of you, King James Bible, is more sure. The fact is, if God were to come down right now and speak to me, he's not going to. But if God was to speak to me right now, And I went to Tracy and said, hey, God showed up to me. And this is what he said. You know what? I may have forgotten something. I may have added something. But when I got it in black and white, I've got a page number. I've got a book. I've got a chapter. I've got a verse. And we have... All kinds of Bible aids today, concordances, commentaries, the internet. I'm feeling blue today. Where in the world? Where in the word can I turn? And you look it up and say, "Go to Psalms," and then you read that, and it comforts you. The writer is in affliction, troubles. He turns to the word. For I am become like a bottle in the smoke. Now, the men that I looked up is leather skins bottle. And you saw that when Jesus talked about, do you put new wine in old bottles? And when you put them under smoke, they dry up. They get parched. And a good reference for this would be Job 30.30. I am being dried up. My life is shriveling. And that's what happens to man. That's what happens when trouble, troubles come. I mean, you, you may not eat as, as you're supposed to. You may not drink as you're supposed to. You may not get as much sleep like you're supposed to. You will become sick. Anxieties. My life is drying up. What do I do? Yet do I not forget thy statutes, the word. I will not stop the word no matter what comes in my life. I'm not going to pretend to know. I don't know. I'm only going to assume here. I would think that the number one attack Satan would have against a Bible-believing, born-again Christian that's doing right. He says, stop you from soul winning. I don't think so. Because I can just pass out tracks and not say nothing. I think Satan, number one charge, and I can be wrong, would be to get you to close your Bible and not open it again. You say, why would you say that? Because I've seen it. I've seen people hold, hold a Bible as an, as an idol and never open and read and study. Okay, I've heard people who, okay, I read my Psalms. But you don't read the rest of the Bible. You don't study like God tells you to do. You've got to be in the book from Genesis to Revelation. You've got to study. You've got to stick to it no matter what happens to you in your life. Well, what if they take the Bibles away? What have you hid in your heart that I may not sin against thee? Have you studied the word enough? If they were to take the Bible away, it would still be knowledge to you. I mean, you may not be quote all the Bible, but how much scripture would you rely on? 
if you were put in prison away from your Bible for being a Christian, could you witness to fellow prisoners without having a Bible? I am dried up, and yet I turn to the Word. In your misery, in your troubles, don't forsake the Word. Because the Word is Jesus Christ. And we are given something again that Paul did not have. Moses did not have. Moses had to write the first five books of the Bible before he had the Bible. Yet, but he did not know anything about the new Jerusalem, the new heavens, and the new earth. How many are the days of thy servant? We don't know. Jesus knew how many years he would live, how many months he would live, how many days he lived, how many hours he lived, how many seconds. He's the only one. And you can't say, let's say you're 10 years old. Well, when I'm 33 on this date, on this year, at this time, I'm going to blow my brains away. So see, I, you can blow your brains away and God said, hey, live the rest of your life as a vegetable. It's not your time to go. You could plan all that and die of just going to sleep and not waking up before that time. How many are the days of thy servant? And is that wrong to ask God? Say, God, how much more time do I got? There's one of the kings in, of Israel, uh, Judah or Israel. God told him, say, listen, prepare thy house, get things straightened out. You're going to die. Now, God extended his life, but God told him. And you know, Bible, you know, people who don't read their Bible don't ask God because they don't read this verse. Because they don't care to witness. They don't care to do what God expects them to do. They don't, because you know what? They don't care how many, they're just living for today. It would be good to have an idea. I believe in. This could be wrong. I think God's going to give me a little long life. And I fear that because my teeth are falling out and my body's aching and sore and all that. But And I hope I use whatever days he's given me, even if tomorrow's my last day, for the Lord. When wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? Well, that's a switch in that verse. Lord, how long am I going to live? Okay, now when are you going to go after those that persecute me? Is there a difference between the Old and New Testament? Jesus said, love them that persecute you. Pray for them. He's asking for execution of judgment. In my days. The proud have dig pits for me. Now a pit would be a big hole in the ground. Eight, nine, ten feet. And you put branches and leaves and anything you can find over the hole. So you're walking or running along and boom, there you are. And there's no way to get out. You are in a hole. There, there's no ladder. There's no rope. There's no steps. Nothing. You are stuck in that pit. Jeremiah was put into a pit like that. I mean, he didn't run into it. They threw him into a pit. Probably an old well. The proud had digged pits for me. Purposely doing it. So one of the afflictions we get from the word that we're studying from the word of the Psalms 119 is there are people out there, the Bible tells you, who are going to purposely 
entrap you. Which are not which are not after thy law. They don't obey the Bible. Else they would help you. And you may have a person that calls themselves a Christian and if they entrap you, they don't follow the Bible. And you don't even have to be saved. To have people build pits for you. Try to climb that corporate ladder to the top and see how many knives are in people's backs. So I can be the head kingpin of the company. And you get to the very top of that ladder and the company sells out and sells you out. We're not even into one chapter of the fall of man. Every one man kills another man. You know where affliction comes from? It comes from man. David said, let me fall in the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are tender. But let me not fall in the hands of man, for he's cruel. I pray that prayer often. The things in my life. I want to fall in the hands of the man. I fall in the hands of the Lord and not man. All thy commandments are faithful. The word of God is, is faithful. What God tells us to do is faithful. They persecute me wrongly. Wrongfully. Help thou me. Again, he's in the word. They have digged these pits for me. The, the commandments are faithful. They persecute me. Execute judgment on me. No matter what the affliction is or who it's coming from, he's in the word. They're persecuting me, Lord, but your commandments are wonderful. What's that have to do with the persecution? Well, Lord is going through his troubles, and I just picked up my Bible. just have to read. Thou shalt not. Or go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Or pray without ceasing commandments. I did my daily Bible reading and studied the Word of God today. Besides all the troubles, Lord, your Word is good. Lord, you and I had a good time in your Word today. P.S. There's people out there bothering me. There's people out there causing me trouble. And I'm not reading the Bible so you take care of it. I'm reading the Bible and dealing and saying, Lord, I love your word. It may be a little bit better reading if I didn't have that problem in my life. Because as I sat there reading Romans 11 or Corinthians 6, I'm reading and I kept seeing that guy's face. I keep seeing the name. I kept worrying about what's going to happen next. Lord, it would be a little more joyful reading your word if I didn't have that problem. Or you read along the Bible and say, Wow, I suffered that about six months ago. That's what that means. Wow, Lord, your your commandments are faithful and great and wonderful. Yeah, that's exactly what that's how I felt. That's what it's all about. How much the Word of God becomes alive when you are part of the Word of God? Help thou me. Who is he crying to? He's crying to God, not man. You know, these people that go to shrinks and a priest 
well, my doctor or my priest can't say nothing because, you know, there's a law. And what if all the laws are wiped off the books tomorrow? We're in under a new nation. And then and a new nation goes and opens up all the file cabinets. You can't do that. Got no. What constitution? Do you realize an enemy could come in this country, open up the file cabinets, and then bring you to court? And You better go to God with your problems. You better go to God with your sins. You better tell God. God, and you know what God does? He doesn't put it in a file cabinet. He washes it with the blood, erases it, and spreads it as far as east as west that nobody can find it again. Not so with man. He puts it down in paper. And he may even use it against you. Never mind another country. You tell somebody you're, you think you're your friend. You wait till you find out when, when you just wronged them or whatever. Or they want to get advantage over you. You see how much that friend is or that family member. Some cases it's called blackmail. You better turn to the Lord for help. Let the Lord bring somebody into your life to help you that you deem tell. Let the Lord be the guidance. The Lord will send the person. They had almost consumed me upon the earth. The affliction of this 81 to 88 is he's, he's almost dead and gone. But I forsook not thy precepts, the word of God. I was almost gone and forgotten. But let me read the word. How much is the word in your life? And I don't mean the Bible as a fact-gathering notebook. I don't mean read the Bible for facts. How much is it in your life? Does God speak to you using the word? Do you shape and fashion your life to the word? We read tonight in Psalms that if you're going to live right, you're to hate evil. Do you hate evil? Well, you're not supposed to hate. You don't know your Bible. There are things in the Bible recorded that God hates. And if God hates it, guess what? You don't do it. Quicken me means to be made alive. They almost killed me, God. Quicken me. God won't give you a big outrageous medical bill. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. God, you love me. Help me. Give me life again. And this is not, a, I mean, this is this is physical and this is a spiritual life that this guy's going. His soul is fainting. His flesh dried up. His spirit is exhausted. He needs to be revived. And he's not talking about a nation. He's talking about himself. Oh, have a revival in America. How about a revival amongst yourself? Because we are a nation of affliction. Half the year of your paycheck goes to the government taxes. 
You can't do what you want to do on your own property after you pay for it. You live in fear of somebody else coming in to violate you. And the police won't be there to, to catch all the action. Like Brother Nari said the other night, if this, if this tropical storm author right now, if he comes in and we lose electricity for a month, and they don't bring in food and water. You see how good your neighbors are to you and your friends. Turn to God. And his word. So shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. The word of God. There have been times in the history of man, there has been no word. Before Moses' time, there was no written word. God spoke to him some way, somehow. There was a time in Israel's and uh, Judah's history that there was no word. They're cleaning up the, the, the temple, and then they found the book of the law. Well, they didn't find it. It was there the whole time. They just didn't go to God. That word was in God's house. It wasn't lost. It was there the whole time. Every king is told to write their own word. Paul, Peter, James, and John did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We are given a written testimony of God and what he has done and the saints, their, their uprisings and their failures recorded for our admonition on what to do and what not to do. Recorded from Genesis to Revelation. And yet if you walk into a typical Baptist church today, you will see violations of the word in practice, in ceremony, in traditions, and music, and conduct. Unbecoming a Christian. And you say, why are they like that? Because they have not read and studied the word. And say, well, what's that have to do with 81 to 88? The affliction that will come. The troubles and problems that go inside that building. Made affliction when they stand before the judgment seat of Christ and get nothing. You know, it's, the other night I said something about your Bible speaking to you. I said, you know what, I, that could be off the wall. You know what it says in the Great White Throne Judgment? It said the books were open. The recording books. I don't know about this day and age, but when I grew up, especially a Catholic, Every Catholic home had this big cinder block weight of a Bible with a picture of Jesus' heart or Mary's heart in the front of it, you know, the Holy Bible. Everybody had to have one of those in your house. And it was never open. You open it to put a family name in the family tree and all that, and that was it. Doesn't the Bible say that the Word of God is alive and quick and Wouldn't it be interesting, again, if this word of God that sits in your house records what you are doing? It tells God what 
Hey, he read me today and studied and actually opened up a dictionary. God, he didn't open me again. I tell you, God, I think you should give that guy a gold medal. He read me as fast as he could, outran everybody in the league. And he didn't learn nothing, but give him a medal for speed reading. Yeah, that is the quickest he's ever read me today. And then when affliction comes, when your affliction comes, when your problems come, oh, they're making fun of me. They're not treating me right. I didn't get that promotion. We'll read Isaiah 53. Oh, Lord, I'm in a lot of pain today. We'll read the final night and day of Jesus Christ. And you won't see Tylenol, aspirin. Matter of fact, they offered him a kind of uh, the vinegar, and he refused it. Now, I don't know. I know that there's diseases out there like leprosy, and there are flesh eating diseases. But the Bible tells us that Jesus' back was ripped open by the cat of nine tails. So when you're really pain and sorrow and suffering, I'm not making fun of you. Read where they whip Jesus and put the crown of thorns and say, Lord, do you remember that pain? Help me. Help. Then in the same verse 86 in the affliction, help thou me. And maybe if you read the word and say, Lord, look what you went through. Me and the Lord will come up, put his arm around his yep. I remember. I just wanted you to read it. I just wanted a little closer walk with thee. And it wasn't in the garden. It was maybe the pain. Lord, nobody gets saved. I've been in the street. No one's been saved. And, oh, Lord, the tracks and the preaching, no one gets saved. And run to where Jesus is standing before Pilate. And the entire nation cries out, Crucify him! Oh, okay, Lord. You had your entire nation reject you. Oh, over here, Elijah, he had a, he, yeah, oh, Lord, I'm the only one. He's like, no, you're not the only one. You know where to run to in your affliction? Have you studied and learned the Bible enough? Or even you have a general idea of what you're going through? It's over here in this book. I know it. It's somewhere in this book. Oh, yeah. The Lord gave me. On my back, a boil. I had no idea what a boil was. Went to the doctors. They had to tell us it was a boil. We didn't know. The first thing I thought about was that king of Israel. And they said, take a lump of figs and put it on there. Well, the Bible didn't tell you that you put the lump of figs on there and it burns. But that illustration of the boil gave me the illustration with a running flesh. 
Now, if you don't know, if you never had a boil, you don't understand what a running flush is when it, when this thing opens up and it's squirting 30 feet in the air. Oh, that's a running flesh. Thank you, Lord. And then you can sit down with Job and say, wow, I just had one. <laughs> Job, you had it from head to toe. And I know what you were doing with that pot thread. That pot thread. <laughs> and you see affliction in your life. God can say, I have opened that to you in the Bible to learn more. Sometimes it's a learning. <laughs> see, affliction is three things and I'm done. God can use it in your life to catch your attention. I've seen that with the jail ministry. Satan can do it to try to get you to quit. Job 1 and Job 2. And you can cause your own affliction. That's just plain stupid. But then you learn from your mistakes. You pick yourself up in the Lord. You get quickened by the Lord. You get back in the Word. You stay in the Word. And there you go. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home.